Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Chorizo Fundido. That's right, football season's here, and with it, the need for new and exciting snacks. And what I was trying to do with this little experiment was create a cheese dip with meat. But what happened instead is I actually created a meat dip with cheese. And while too much meat in a dip is not necessarily a bad thing, I'm not exactly convinced yet it was a good thing either. But anyway, we'll analyze and discuss all that at the end. But before we can do that, we have to begin. And we'll do that by tossing some chorizo in a dry cold pan. And yes, that is a lot. That is one pound of chorizo pork sausage. And generally for a dip this size, I would use about half that. But I bought a pound and decided to see what would happen if I used it all. And then to that, we will add some green onions, mostly the white and light parts. And we'll reserve the green tops for the garnish. And then we're also gonna add a whole bunch of diced peppers. And I went with three different kinds, some red bell pepper, which are sweet, some beautiful dark green poblano chilies, which have a little bit of heat to them, and then last but not least, some fairly spicy jalapeno, which always work wonderfully in any kind of dip involving cheese. And what we'll do at this point is turn our heat on to medium high. And as this mixture comes up to temperature, what we'll do is break up our sausage into very small pieces, using, of course, a smiley face wooden spatula. And if you're wondering what the deal is with this, it's actually kind of a funny story. But anyway, like I said, we're going to go ahead and break up this meat. And because generally chorizo has a good amount of fat in it, we didn't need to start with any oil to begin here. In fact, depending on what sausage you use, you may actually have to drain fat. So like I said, we'll go ahead and break this up into very small pieces. Or at least that's what I like to do. If you want to leave these in bigger crumbles, go ahead. That's certainly your right. You are, after all, the Tito Jackson of your Fondito action. But for me personally, Texture-wise, I think the smaller the better. And then what we'll do once that's all broken up as shown is simply cook it stirring until it's browned and our peppers are just barely cooked through. All right, I don't want them falling apart. I want a little bit of texture to them. And then besides the crumbling and the cooking, we'll also want to check to see if we need to drain any grease. But as you can see, I really didn't have that much. So I skipped that step, but something to pay attention to. And it's never a bad idea to give it a taste because depending on how salty the sausage is, we may or may not want to add some salt. But mine was nicely seasoned, so I'm going to use this mixture as is. And then once we're happy with this mixture, we'll simply turn off the heat and set that aside while we move into final assembly, which I'm going to do in this nice big stainless steel bowl, which I'm using not only because it gives me plenty of room to mix everything, but also because it's so dinged up and shows that I've been cooking for many, many years. In a way, it's sort of like a boxer's face, at least a bad boxer. But anyway, what we'll do at this point is toss in a half a pound of cream cheese, which really does not look like cream cheese. But that's because I'm fancy and live in San Francisco. So I had to use an artisan hipster brand, which was extremely dry and crumbly, very delicious, but just not as creamy as that stuff from Philadelphia, which is probably what you should and will use. And what we'll do is go ahead and transfer our warm sausage mixture over the top, which will help soften that up and make it easier to mix at which point we can go ahead and add the rest of the cheese, which for me was some sharp cheddar, either orange or white. It really is the exact same cheese. This one is just colored with a natto. It for me makes for a little better looking dip. And then we'll go ahead and finish up with a whole bunch of Monterey Jack. And by the way, yes, of course I shredded that cheese myself. As you well know, only a crazy person buys pre-shredded cheese. And then once we have all this together, all we need to do is give it a mix. Oh, and by the way, I should have mentioned by now, I did not invent the word fundido just because I thought it sounded cool. It's a term that simply means some kind of melted or molten cheese. But for the record, if it hadn't existed, I eventually would have thought it up. And then what we'll do once this is mixed until just combined is go ahead and transfer it into some kind of heat-proof dish. Because we're going to finish this under the broiler or in a very, very hot oven. And that's it. Once that's been transferred in and distributed evenly, our fundido is ready for the hito. So let's go ahead and pop that in about six inches under our broiler, which is set to high. And we'll cook that for about five or six minutes or until it looks like this. It should be nicely browned, possibly bubbling, and look like something you want to eat very badly. And obviously something this gorgeous could be served as is. But I decided to dress mine up a little bit with some diced tomato, as well as some sliced green onion from the tops we saved. And that's it. Our fundido is finito. 
No, I'm not getting tired of that. So let me go ahead and grab a chip and go in for a taste to see how this experiment worked out. And I decided to use a spoon since I didn't know how firm it was. And I thought it would be a bad look breaking a chip on the first bite. Although as you can see, the spoon didn't work out that much better. And it was right about here when I realized I might have put too much meat in this, since it was not as ooey and gooey as I had hoped. I mean, it was still incredibly delicious. And zero people at your party would complain. But it really wasn't a cheese dip with meat. Like I said earlier, it was more of a meat dip with cheese. Although it did actually pass the ultimate dip test. Is it soft enough to scoop up with a chip and not have the chip break? Which it was. But as with all edible experiments, we can and will make adjustments, which you'll read about on the blog. All right, I am going to recommend we go with about half the amount of sausage and quite possibly even mix in a little sour cream. But anyway, that's enough spoilers. I will just finish up by reiterating Despite the copious amount of chorizo, this was extraordinarily delicious and would make a very welcome addition to your game day buffet. And as far as culinary experiments go, this fundido was fun indeed. And with a few slight modifications, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.